honey badgers. So uh, I, Nook. Sorry. <laughs> Nook is uh, going after one of the cats. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, do a start, quick start notice to this video. I picked up one of those, um, a, I think it's A2 size light boards on Timu the other day because uh, they were doing one of their lightning deals and it was like a crazy good sale on these things for A2 size boards. So we're going to look at that in a minute, but I just wanted to mention this because I just spotted this when I was opening the package there. Uh, I had some smaller stuff that uh, I ordered at the same time. And <laughs> when I opened it up, I just thought I would show anybody that um, may order one of these, how it might show up at your house, just so you're prepared. Um, it doesn't look like anything is... Um, you know, immediately messed up or anything. I just thought I would mention this. Uh, it looks like it comes double bagged on the inside. So this is your outside bag. And then they put another one in here. And then the light board is in this. And the smaller stuff to my order, which will probably be in a different video, uh, is down at the bottom there. So there was efforts to, you know, show that this was thought out as far as packaging. The thing I wanted to mention though is I just noticed this. Uh, so I don't know if that was from the factory like that or if it was, uh, uh, you know, through the um, postal service, customs, whatever. But uh, it looks like it was a box cutter cut or something that not only got through this one, but also got through the interior bag as well. Uh, and I, like I mentioned, the smaller stuff in my order is down in that second bag. And when I first opened this order up, a couple of the smaller things were stuck to the top of this package. So I haven't completely gone through this yet, so I don't know if anything is missing just yet. But I thought I would just mention that real quick for anybody that orders one of these. Just be careful when it shows up at your house. Um check your package really thoroughly just in case something this, like this happens and you might have missed something in your order if it had fallen out. Uh, I don't know that any I've lost anything in my package yet. I just thought I would point that out real quick uh, just so you have a heads up. Okay, now on to looking at the light board. Originally, I was just going to make this a uh, unboxing for this, my uh, new A3 light board I just got, but now that I'm thinking about it, I figured why not expand this a little bit and do sort of an overview collection talk about all the light boards I have, which are collectively just three. <laughs> but if you're new to diamond painting and you're thinking about getting into light boards and you're not sure which size you might need, or if you just want to see um, the light quality, the size, how it works with your canvases and all of that, um, this might be helpful to you. But to start, I figured I would just go ahead and do the unboxing of the A3 first. Um, oh, I forgot I was going to bring some canvases in here to show the light quality. Give me just a second, I'll grab some canvases. Okay, grabbed a couple whips to show on the boards in a second because we're going to light them up. <laughs> okay, so uh, I just bought this A3 from Timu recently. Uh, I think they had it on a lightning deal for like 30 bucks or something, maybe less than that, which is crazy for an A3 board. So out of curiosity, I thought I would pick one up and see how it does. Uh, so this is the uh, the interior box it comes in. Um, if you saw the beginning of this video, well, if you saw, of course you saw the beginning of this video. <laughs> At the beginning of this video, I showed you the two interior bags that were on top of this. So this is the white box that was inside that protects all of that. So kind of like a pizza box. Uh, it comes with their instructions in various languages. Let's see what else you have your USB power cord and then you just have your light board in here which um, I'm just noticing which I'm not really surprised but if you're buying this just so you have a heads up um, and you're not surprised by not having all the parts uh, if you want to plug this into a wall outlet you're gonna need one of whoop, there we go in frame <laughs> you're gonna need one of these uh, and these are readily available in pretty much any store or uh, you know, online, just look up a uh, USB adapter, wall adapter, and you should find one pretty cheap. So yeah, you need one of these. I have these like all over my house. So I think, 
Um, I think when I bought my A2, which I'll show in a second. Oh, no. I was going to say I thought the power cord, the adapter came with it, but I'm just noticing it says Amazon on the back. So I think this is actually my old uh, Kindle plug-in that I adapted to that one. So yeah, if you want to use it on a wall outlet, you're going to need one of those power uh, adapters because it doesn't look like this comes with it. It just comes with your standard USB power cord. So your actual light board, it has the corner buffers for packaging, uh, just styrofoam, you can pop those off. So we'll get those off of here. And then it also comes in this uh, interior, another in uh, protective bag. So this looks like it's just taped up on the back side here. So I'm gonna take that off. And then when you first get this, it'll have a uh, protective cover over this. So you can pull this off. Um, I guess if you wanted to, you could maybe leave it on, but it might affect the light quality. I don't know. Um, I've always taken them off. I think mainly they put that on there just so it's not scratched up in transit. So we'll pull that off. And then that's your power button up there, which that's where your power cord is going to go in, in that little slot there. So, actually, <laughs> let me get the pizza box out the way since that's not really helping us with any of this right now. Take care of that later. Okay, so let me pop off one of these power cords and see how this looks. Okay. So, actually, before I do that, so that's what your uh, A3 size is going to look like. Uh, with light pads like this, um, the lower the number, when you see, like, uh, like I'll show you here, the lower the number, the uh, higher, the bigger your board is going to be. So this is a, I believe this is an A4. If I remember right, this is the very first light pad I got back in 2020 when I first started diamond painting. Uh, I got this off of an eBay special for like 10 bucks, I think. <laughs> um, that's what I've done with all of my light boards is I just wait until I find a place that has them on special and then I'll pick up one uh, when it gets to a price that I'm cool with. So yeah, this is my A4. So the, uh, the lower the number after A, the bigger your board is going to be. So this is my upgrade from my A4, which I bought in 2022, I think. I don't use a light board for everything, so these are just kind of handy to have. Um, there's plenty of canvases I, I work with where I don't use a light board at all, but they're just nice to have uh, if, if I need one. Uh, so this is the A3 size. And this will, I've worked on up to 40 by 50s with this. I mean, really with light boards, you can, they work with any size. I mean, if you get, I've seen plenty of diamond painters. If you get like an A4, you can move it around in little corner sections. If you're only doing, you know, a section at a time, you just stick this under the section you're working on and it'll light up that. Other diamond painters, they like the whole canvas lit up when they're working, it just, I guess, depends on what your budget and your preference is. Um, me, I typically try to match, if I am gonna use a light board, I try to match, it's just a personal preference of mine, I try to match the size of the light board with the canvas I'm working on. So typically I won't use the tiny ones for anything really bigger than a 30 by 40. Um, but this is also one, I have like a little travel binder that uh, if I'm going somewhere, uh, traveling and I want to take a kit with me a smaller kit I have this packed away in that little binder um, so that it's ready to go um, but yeah I've when I first started out that's kind of what I did with with this little one is I just moved it section to section over canvases because I do have a larger canvases but because they take longer um, I tend to work through my smaller canvases more readily or more quickly uh, so this, I'll show you what all these look like lit up in a second. So this is my A3 that I bought in, I believe it was 2022. And the power button 
is over on the, the side here. And this one, uh, you can, I've done it both ways. You can um, put it either horizontally or uh, vertically, and you can just clip the canvas, get, you know, get one of the, like I use the little <laughs> um, like potato chip bag clippers sometimes and I'll just clip the canvas that way just make sure you don't put it on the power button and you can get uh I don't really use them but you can get covers for the power button area so you don't accidentally turn them on uh regularly I I haven't picked mine up just or I haven't picked any up for my boards just because I don't use my boards often enough that I think about it but it is something that I keep thinking yeah I should get that just in case but yeah, those are also pretty easy to find if you just look for like power board, light board cover, power covers. I don't know what they'd be under, but they're all over the place if you just uh, look up like power button covers. Uh, so you can do that. And then this is the, the new one, the A2. <laughs> Let me keep my numbers straight. So yeah, at some point I will, I really want to splurge and get the A1, um, but that's like that's like what uh, one step under like a tattoo shop light board <laughs> table uh, I need I would need the space for that so uh, I may wait on the a1 a little while also typically when I see the a1s the lowest I've seen them for um, at least to get a good one and not like a cheap scammy one <laughs> uh, typically the the a1s I've seen they tend to run somewhere about 60 70 bucks even on sale as far as I've seen so yeah, that's definitely like a splurge thing. Uh, so yeah, let's light these up and show you what they look like uh, with a canvas on top of them. So let me, um, let's start with the, the little one, the A4. So this is my current whip. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna, it should show up on camera. Well, actually, let me show you what it looks like off camera. Just a picture of a Jesus in, uh, the garden praying. Um, so this is the the littlest one, the A4, and it has just like the other ones. It has different light modes. So if you want it low, moderate, or super high, depending on what your light needs are, and you just set it on top of that, and basically work on whichever square you're working on. And like I said, you can do this with any size canvas. It's just a preference of mine to sort of like I said match the canvas with the size of the board but you don't have to do that you could take you know even if you were working on a say a like 50 by 70 or something you could still use one of these little ones and just move it to the section uh you're currently working on if that's easier for you as far as like um you know saving space or if you're on a budget or you know whatever like I said whatever your needs are so that's what the a4 looks like and then you just tap it again to turn it off, but that's what the lighting is on that one. So then I might just be able to, I have all different power cords for all of these, but actually I was just thinking I might just be able to use the same cord on all of these since they're all kind of in the same size power cord wise, I think. Okay, so this is the uh, A3. <laughs> All right, and like I said, you can do it landscape or horizontal. Uh, do I have it over here? Let me check. Typically when I'm using this one, I have this little painter's easel. This is just a cheap aluminum one I found again on eBay. I think it was like 10 bucks. It's typically used for actual artist canvas, but I found that it works just fine to hold my uh, light board if I want to work at it from a, you know, sit, sitting up position, standing position. Because uh, sometimes, depending on where I'm sitting, what my workspace looks like, sometimes it's a little bit easier to have it propped up. So I just got one of these canvas holders. And uh, I'll do, and this one you can is a little bit tricky, but you can adjust how far back it sits. So I'll just sit it like that. And then also it's handy because it has this sort of tail thing on the side. So when I want to put the light board 
um, vertical, it helps hold it that way too. So then, yeah, I will just, you know, clip the, like I said, the potato chip clips. I'll just put them on the side there usually or at the top to hold my canvas still. So that is one option. I just thought I would mention, oops, I am caught up here. Or you could just lay it flat on the table, you know, whatever your working station looks like. So yeah, this is the A3. And again, uh, three different light settings. So that's your low, that's your medium, and that's your high. Okay, and I haven't tried the new A2 yet, so let's fire that one up and see what that one looks like. So, let's click that in there. Oh, okay, and it, I just saw, I don't know if my other boards have it, but this one has a blue power light to show you that it's on in case you have it off um, and you forgot to turn it off or unplug it or something. It has a light that's showing you that, hey, you still got this plugged in. Okay, um, and then I brought my bigger canvas out, the uh, Josephine Wall one that is still in progress. So <laughs> if y'all were wondering where I was on that, I haven't gotten much further. Because uh, the thing with this Josephine Wall is I do like this canvas as far as the art is. It's just the actual doing of it. I get a little burnout doing, I think there's like, what I think it said there was something like 30 something colors on here, but the actual palette of it when you're doing it, it just feels like variations of brown and orange over and over again with like little blips of yellow. <laughs> and it's a 40 by 70 of that. So I am gonna complete it. It's just, I, I do like a section and then I get a little bit burnout just doing orange and brown and black for hours on end. <laughs> so this is going to get done, but it's, I keep having to take breaks and do other stuff with more color variation. Um, so yeah, if you're wondering, <laughs> uh, I haven't been doing updates cause I haven't been working on this one. Um, but that's as far as I've gotten on this one, but I am constantly reminding myself, Hey, you need to come back to this one. Uh, so I thought I would use this one as an example for the bigger light board. So again, three light settings. So you click it once, that's your low, and then medium, and then high. So yeah, just depending on what your eyeball needs are, <laughs> eyeball preferences. So yeah, you can shift it there. And you see, so you see like the, the workspace difference depending on how much you tend to do at once you can do like your little square for the night with like a little light pad um, and the difference between let me just show you here the difference between the a3 and the a2 is not like wildly different but it's enough of a difference to just you know <laughs> it, it feels like a little bit of a a treat yourself moment when you get a little bit bigger. <laughs> Not on all things, just light boards. <laughs> um, so there are the sections there where if you want to do a big old patch of it, you can do it a little bit more comfortably here. So you, you know, if you don't want to do the A4 method, you don't have to move anything around. It's just there. So you see what I was saying about um, going to the A1, that would basically be a table, a full tabletop version, which is going to be super nice one day, <laughs> but I don't really have the, uh, art space for that just yet. I'm working up to that. Uh, so this is what you would be looking at for the A3, no, A2. Sorry, I keep getting those mixed up. This is the A2. So uh, I will see if these are still available. I don't know that it'll still be on a lightning deal. It might be, they might have started it over, but I will link it down below if it's still available. If you wanna check that out and you're on a budget, um, yeah, do something nice for yourself. <laughs> if this is one of your main uh, hobbies, one of your main passions, if it's something that you feel would, would make your time doing this even nicer, go for it. Um, I will say though that if you are new to diamond painting, 
you don't, it's not the type of thing where you need to go out and buy all of the things all at once to feel like you can do this. It's, it's one of those things that you, you should probably start gradually <laughs> and build uh, your specific kit to your particular needs and you don't need to buy all of the things everybody's getting just because everybody has them. Um, there's no one way to do this. There's no one super tool that you need to get that's um, going to put you ahead of the game. Um, it's all about, sorry, keep hitting the stand. It's all about um, getting into this and going at your own pace, working on the canvases you like, getting the pens you like, because it's all done with your hands. So it, there's no point in buying pens that don't fit your hands right just because you saw the the most popular youtuber start using them um if it's not a good fit for you there are plenty of tools out there that i see more popular diamond painters on their channels using that i know are is not really a great fit for me because i've either tried it or it, or if i've seen it it doesn't make much sense to me the way i diamond paint so i don't bother with it but sometimes i'll come back to stuff where before it might have not made much sense and then later i'll be like yeah maybe it'll have a little use um like just recently i started using the uh the sticky pads you know when you um the the i don't even know what they're made out of they're some kind of like sticky plastic that you put on the canvas that you can put your tray on top of and it doesn't mess up the adhesion but you can work closer to the canvas i just started using those so yeah, you can you can adjust to what you like, and um, yeah, I would I would encourage you to just go at your own pace, figure out the tools you like, build your art space the way that it feels good to you, and don't worry about what everybody else is doing. But if you're still trying to figure it out and you're still looking for tips and what does this look like and how does this work, that's why I put these videos out there. If you just want to see an example so you can decide for yourself then um, yeah do that and I'm happy to help if I can <laughs> so I guess that's it for this video I just wanted to show what the different sizes look like since I'm starting to build a collection of them now <laughs> and I hope this was helpful and yeah I guess until the next one guys I'll talk to you later bye